Hello everyone, Caleb here with some information about a project I did a while ago in hooking up a desktop graphics card to my laptop because it needed just a little bit more GPU power to play the games I wanted to play at the time. Some of you may have seen the original video I posted. It had no commentary and not a ton of information to it. And that was intentional. It was actually made to supplement a forum post where I gave pretty specific details on how to do this yourself. Now, since then, the videos become way more popular than I expected and even more popular than the forum post. So I figured it only makes sense to post an update video with information here about how I actually did this. So first off, I think it helped give a little historical context. I did this original project back in 2009 because I would often go and visit my family and I didn't want to lug a big desktop along with me so that I could play games with my brother who lived there at the time. So what I chose to do instead was to look for a solution which would allow me to beef up the graphics power of the laptop I had which I was bringing with me anyways. And indeed, after a lot of searching and experimentation, a couple blown fuses, I found a way to do that. Now, what I'm presenting here is actually specific to this generation of ThinkPads, but I'll include some information at the end about how you might be able to do similar projects for your laptops if you want to do so. Now, there are two key things to gain this to work, and this will apply to any setup where you want to hook up a graphics card to your laptop. The first is getting a data bridge so that the GPU and the laptop can actually talk. And in my case, I used the ThinkPad Advanced Stock, which allowed me to connect a PCIe card, which I used to connect the graphics card in this case. The second piece is to get power to that graphics card. Now, most modern desktop GPUs take as much power or even more than a laptop. So your laptop is not going to be able to supply that power. Now there are some off the shelf solutions for being able to do this, but they're a little pricey. So I decided to go with my own and I just took a power supply from uh, an old Dell mini computer, butchered it up and plugged that into the graphics card and that worked pretty well for me. Now all this may seem a little technical, but it's actually not that complicated. So I'll go ahead and walk you through a video of the setup running, kind of tell you what everything's doing as we go along. So you can see here my laptop, which is a ThinkPad T400. It's currently connected to the advanced stock. Turn it on here. You can see that triggered the graphics card to turn on as well. The fan is spinning. Now if you take a look here, you'll see there's an extra power cable going into the graphics card there. That is not connected to the laptop. That is actually connected to uh, an external power source, which I made. All right, and you can see it start to boot up on this external monitor here. This will require use of an external monitor because there's no reasonable way I found to route the video back into the laptop monitor. All right, and we'll go ahead and give this some time to boot up. You'll notice this is Windows Vista. I've since upgraded to Windows 8 with no problems. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at the GPU here. You can see it's an upside down Radeon HD 5770. It's a little bit of an older card, but it was pretty good at the time that I originally put this project together. Now there's nothing actually stopping me from upgrading it and getting all the advantages of a new card. Although I have found some compatibility issues with NVIDIA cards. I have never gotten one of those to work, unfortunately, with this setup. All right, now here you see a zoomed in view of the connector between the advanced stock and the video card. This is what's called a flexible PCIe riser. It sounds technical, but it's really not that complicated. It's basically just a cable that is a PCIe port on both sides, because as you can see, the video card is pretty large here and it can't actually fit inside the dock. So this is what lets me sit it next to the dock and have enough room for it. 
So part of the magic which makes this happen is having the ThinkPad Advanced Dock, which adds a PCIe port to the laptop. Now, if you don't have a laptop which supports the ThinkPad Advanced Dock, which most likely you don't because it was ThinkPad only and is a little outdated at this time, there are other options which I'll cover at the end. Now, this here is the power supply I used for the GPU. It's a power brick from a Dell Optiplex, which is a fairly old mini computer which Dell used to make. Now, the reason I use this one is simply because it provides the 12 volts we need and also the required current, which we'll use to actually power the GPU since it can't use the laptop's power supply. Now, circled in red up there is the inline fuse for this power supply. If you do go with this option, you're going to want to make sure that you leave that as part of the power supply so that you get that little bit of extra protection. Okay, and now here you can see a zoomed in view of the actual connector from this power brick. You can see the different ports are circled here. And what's important to notice is there is plus 12 volts, ground, and remote. The plus 12 volts is what the video card is going to take as input, and we don't need to convert that at all, so this is perfect for us. Now, it's important to notice that extra little remote port there, because you'll need to bridge that with ground to actually activate the power supply, otherwise no power is going to come through. You'll probably want to do this using some sort of manual switch like I did. That way you can actually control when the power supply is on and off as opposed to just always having it on. But other than that, it's really just a matter of routing the cables to the right places we need them. Now, here's a close-up of the PCI Express connector that we'll want to actually plug into the video card. Now, to make this actually work, you'll need to cut up the two cables and you'll need to connect power to power and ground to ground. Now, in most cases, all ground wires should be black, so that part should be easy. Now, the power wires on the PCI Express connector side should be yellow, and on the Dell Optiplex power brick side should be red. You can verify this by just using a voltmeter on both sides and verifying that this is the case. I take no responsibility for what happens if you don't verify this. Now once you have that figured out, you'll just need to solder up the pairs of wires and it's not that difficult, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this video here. So plenty of other resources on YouTube and around the web, be sure to look those up. Finally here we have the finished soldered product. You can see I added a little switch there just to turn the power brick on and off and um, some electrical tape around my rather ugly soldering work, and it's plugged into the video card there. Now, this was the final step in my particular setup, but I'll go ahead and give some more information now on how to get things set up with different setups, which is likely what you have. Well, I have here a image from Village Tronic, and they supply was called a VI dock. Now, they seem to be the most popular supplier of VI docks at the moment, but I can't really vouch for the quality because I've never used their products before. So, use at your own risk. One of the nice things about using something like this is that it does pretty much everything for you. Just plug it into your laptop uh, using one of the supply connectors such as Mini PCIe, or I believe they even have a Thunderbolt option and they even make the power supply for you in different uh, wattages. So just plug in your video card and hopefully it should work. I've run into compatibility issues with my setup. I would be surprised if there are no compatibility issues in this particular product. Currently for this brand, their prices range from about $200 to $300 for a complete VI dock, including the power supply, which doesn't seem that bad compared to what else is out on the market. Now, keep in mind this isn't an endorsement, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's out there, so use at your own risk. All right, that's it for me. Be sure to check the description for links to some of the things I've talked about, 
and leave comments if you have any questions, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this information useful.